Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing really, really well. So today we're just doing a good old fashioned book haul. So uh, Matthew and I have been out thrifting a little bit over the past couple of weeks and um, I did order some books online as well. So wanted to share that with you. I also have some movies because we are starting to build up our DVD Blu-ray collection again and uh, really super happy about that because we love of course horror movies but also vintage movies and stuff like that and uh, there's some classics that once we see them out in the thrift stores we definitely want to grab them so I hope you guys enjoy the video and um, there's gonna be a little bit of everything in here so there's horror which I'm gonna be starting with the horror but there's also some vintage children's series as well so if you guys are specifically here for the horror I'll do that first um, but I do also have uh, lots of books for other collections that I have in my vintage collection as well so starting off with a couple of books for the ghosty shelf uh, over here which it's getting quite full we have to start a new ghosty shelf here coming up probably with these ones um, so my very good friend Jackie from the Jersey Ghouls podcast was very very kind to send me a box full of goodies and uh, she had a couple of books in there and I'm super super excited to put these on the ghosty shelf so I often say um, I love getting books from all areas that have local folk, le folk legends and folklore and, and ghost stories and all of that kind of thing, nonfiction that I can put on my ghosty shelf because here we can only usually get the Canadian ones. Um, so she very, very kindly threw a couple of books in the package as well. And my husband and I did a taste test over on my Patreon. Um, of all of the goodies and the snacks and everything that she sent up so if you guys are interested in patreon of course no pressure whatsoever there is a link to it down below it's brand new it's only a couple of months old uh, but I do put up exclusive um, content over there also so getting into the books that she sent so I was super super excited to see this one um, so this one is out of the ghost house series which I do collect and super excited to have another one to add because like I said the ones that I get here are from Canada and this one is ghost stories of New Jersey specifically and this is number 70 in the collection so I'm getting quite a few of these but there's so many and I have such a far ways to go um, but getting closer so I'm super super excited to add this one to the shelf and then uh, this one this is spooky New Jersey and so another one um, uh, with local ghost legends and stuff like that it says tales of hauntings strange happenings and other local lore and she went ahead and tabbed a couple of the stories in there for me so I, I'm super super excited to read these and she even has like little notes in here it's so nice it's so nice of her to do that um, so if, if anybody ever wants to send me a book of local ghost legends from where they're from uh, I'd really appreciate it and it'll sit with pride on my on my ghosty shelf but of course there's like I said there's no pressure like with my patreon or anything like that there's no pressure um, just the fact that you guys watch my videos at all is amazing but here are two for the ghosty shelf which i'm super super excited to add and make sure you check out the jersey ghouls podcast it is fantastic and the girls uh have become very very good friends of mine so um go check them out so i'll have a link to all of their stuff below so for the rest of the horror books that I have, um, I did put in an order on spooky sellables. Uh, so I am an ambassador for Marissa's shop. So if you would like to support her over on Etsy, you can use code Sagewood15 for 15% off your order. But uh, yeah, I, I scored some really, really amazing finds over there. I was so super excited. And the good thing is, is when she puts up um, collectibles like these a lot of the time she'll have it posted on her Instagram so I know that something new is going up and I can go over there and snag anything that I need for my collections so I do have two of the Fear Street Collectors Edition editions so I have number eight and number nine so uh, the first one is Collectors Edition number eight Lessons in Terror the Cheater, College Weekend, and Final Grade. And then the other one, Collector's Edition number nine, Creatures of the Night, Haunted, Bad Moonlight, and Trapped. So these are um, like some of the original bind ups that came out. I mean, I know you can get them in the, in the new edition bind ups as well, but these ones are kind of the original ones, super hard to find. And these are the only two I have. So I'm super, super excited to put these on the Fear Street shelf. I am absolutely surrounded by books down here, you guys. Um, I, I desperately need to start reorganizing the shelves. Um, I have been logging everything into the bookshelf app as I've been going, but of course we just 
keep accumulating so I have to get some more space made on the shelves especially because these bind ups are are fairly chunky so I'm super super excited to add these to my collection and I'll be looking for uh, the other bind ups as well and the next one is a babysitter's themed book so this is alone in the dark what you can't see can kill you by daniel parker so this is wonderfully embossed on the cover um it has that wonderful sort of 80s 80s to 90s feel and um i love these sort of babysitters themed books so this one is a first printing from 1995 which is super cool and like i said it has the wonderful embossing and the beautiful orange lettering and everything it's just i don't know i'm getting to the point now where everything that i see that's orange is reminding me of halloween so uh this is really really cool to have i haven't uh seen this one around and i haven't seen it as far as i know in anybody else's collection so it was super super cool to find this one in marissa's shop um, and you can see on the back here just before I move on babysitters nightmares and it has that cool font oh I'm getting so excited for Halloween we're almost halfway to Halloween which um, that's kind of crazy but super super excited and next up we have a Charles L Grant so I've never read any Charles L Grant but this is the sound of midnight and just look at the, the cover on this this is absolutely beautiful so you have kind of this campfire down here and um, like a crescent moon out in the wilderness and again there's some embossing on here so it says Ox Run Station is a quiet peaceful town its children are ordinary innocent kids their favorite place is the toy shop run by Dale Bartlett. Dale Bartlett's orderly world is about to end. Nothing is as simple as it seems. Ox Run Station is a gathering place for evil. The children's games are an ancient ritual wor worshiping an old and angry god. Their temple is an abandoned orchard. No god can live without sacrifice. Will Dale Bartlett be the next adult to die so this has very much like a children of the corn sort of feel to it if you guys have read any charles uh l grant or um read this one specifically let me know because this sounds really really good and then getting back to kind of the cheesy ya uh so we have homecoming queen by john hall this is one specifically that i've been looking for a while for the collection and this copy is in great condition and again wonderfully embossed cover so this is the first printing from 1996 so amazing cover and i love any kind of like homecoming prom sort of themed books um and on the back it says long live the queen so this was is one that i haven't read before but like i said i i've been looking for it for quite a while it's one of those ones that it's like i can't wait to get this for my collection but i don't even know why really uh so i'm super super excited to put this up and uh I don't know I'm getting to the point where I have so many of these like prom queen sort of um homecoming stories that it's like I could do a whole you know readathon or reading vlog on just sort of homecoming queen stories so super super excited to have this one for the collection and then we have uh two twin sister books by Janice Harrell so we have twin sisters and then we have twin terror and at first I didn't know that these were kind of uh from the same series I guess but this is like a duology I think it is just a duology I don't think it's a full series I don't know much about this one don't know a whole lot about the author and I'm not going to get into any of the synopses because the second book is like a direct sequel and there's spoilers right on the back of the book so uh but this is really really cool I don't know anything about this author but twins of course is a super cheesy sort of sub genre of YA horror so super super excited to have these and again it has the wonderfully embossed titles on the front so these are going to go up on my YA shelf which is also starting to get quite full so I'm going to have to make some space for these ones so that's it kind of for the horror so I do have a couple in the uh so, some other series that I do collect so starting off with a Sweet Valley High so this is uh number 60 that fatal night and um i'm really really excited to start using my bookshelf app when i'm out at the thrift store sorry this is not focusing in here guys um yeah so i've been starting to use my bookshelf app out at the thrift stores and it's re really really come in handy especially for series like this that i collect because um 
you know, I, it's really hard to keep in my mind what I have, what I don't have, because sometimes I think I have something and I don't, or I think I don't have it and I go ahead and buy it and I end up with like two or three copies of the same book. So I've been using my bookshelf app. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but it is really, really great. You can download it directly on your phone and you just scan the barcodes on the backs of your books, the ISBN, and you can take your, your library basically anywhere you wanna go and you can sort them and everything. So um, you know right in the store if you have something or not, which has come in really, really handy. And then I have two out of the Babysitter's Club series. So uh, we have number 36, Jessie's Babysitter. And we have number 42, Jessie and the Dance School Phantom. So kind of a coincidence that we have two Jessie themed books out on the hunt in the past couple of weeks. Um, but I, I remember reading both of these, but for some reason, reason Jessie and the Dance School Phantom is kind of like sticking in my brain as one that I really enjoyed when I was a kid. Um, I, I definitely want to start reading some of these during the summer. Um, maybe some of the mysteries like this one um, that are, you know, kind of have a little bit of a spooky theme to them. And then getting into some random books that I have. I found this one today and uh, it, it's kind of a, a funny one, especially because it's not in the season for it. But this is The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum, author of The Wonderful World of the Wizard of Oz. And this is a Signet classic. And I believe it said it was from 1983. We'll take a, a little look here. Um, but I'm assuming this has to do with, uh, oh, it looks like these are like short stories, basically. And it does have some illustrations in here as well. Um, so this kind of caught my eye and I thought it was really, really cool, especially because it says uh, Signet on the top. And this is the first printing from 1986. I thought it was 1983, but 1986. So definitely going to put this one up on the shelf. Um, it, it was one that was kind of a little bit out of the norm, but it really caught my eye. So I thought this would be really cool to read during the holidays. And then I did find another book in the Mandy series. So uh, I hadn't even heard of this series before, and now I'm kind of starting to see them everywhere. So uh, Lois Gladys Leopard. Uh, is the author of the Mandy books and this is number 22 Mandy and the Angels Secret so um, I know Jackie actually who sent me the ghosty books told me that she used to read these growing up I never ever did I had never heard of it before but let me know if you know anything about the Mandy series it seems very warm and cozy and just like a cute little kids book so um, I guess I've started a Mandy collection now because now now that I've learned about it I'm seeing them everywhere and then one random uh, Apple paperback. This is sixth grade secrets. Laura's sixth grade class is full of secrets. Secret messages, secret clubs, and secret crushes. So we have a girl on the front here who's about to beat the crap out of someone. So this is just one of those, uh, again, cheesy sort of kids books. Um, I have a couple of other like fourth grade and sixth grade themed books. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna be starting a shelf for those. And I mean, these Apple paperbacks, uh, I used to love reading these as a kid and it very much reminds me of like um, the scholastic book fair or like you know you you would open the magazines and you would you would pick the books that you wanted to the book orders that you pick the books that you wanted to uh order for that month or whatever and this very much reminds me of that so if i find these out there they're super cheesy and i like to put them in my collection so i mean I, my collection is mainly horror but i do like these cheesy ones as well and then i did find a couple of uh super cheesy sort of Canadian um, series or, you know, mini series or whatever. So this is one that I hadn't heard of before. So this is Camp X by Eric Walters. And I found three books by Eric Walters in the last couple of weeks. So Camp X is basically, uh, this revolves around two kids um, and they stumble across what looks like a military base and find themselves being escorted home in order to stay away. But the boys' curiosity gets the better of them, and they are soon swept into the mystery and intrigue of Camp X, Canada's top secret spy camp. So we have the original, and then we have Camp X Fool's Gold, which is kind of a continuation of the story, I guess. This one is not in great condition, um, but it is still very readable, and it's not too, too banged up. But... Um, 
ones that I hadn't heard of before and I've very much gotten into collecting really super cheesy Canadian series so I thought I would put these on the shelf and I think these are from the 90s just give me one sec well this is really small early 2000s so 2002 and then along the same lines I found this one uh, also by Eric Walters trapped in ice so this is kind of like one of those survival sort of uh, Canadian stories, which I've read a whole lot of them, like Lost in the Barrens is one of my favorite, uh, well actually the, the miniseries, the movie is my favorite, I've never actually read the book, it's by Farley Mowat, and um, Death on the Ice uh, is another one that's like a survival kind of story. So this one says, based on the true events surrounding the ill-fated Canadian Arctic expedition of 1913, Trapped in Ice is a riveting, fast-paced adventure peopled with intriguing characters and set in the marvelous, brutal world of ice and snow. So that sounds really, really cool. It's kind of like, you know, a, a children or middle grade sort of book. So I thought I would grab this one and put it on the shelf. And then uh, I, I remember reading this book as a kid and I can't remember anything about it. So here's another Kit Pearson. And Kit Pearson is the author of the Sky is Falling series, which I've featured here on the channel before. So I'm starting to find a lot of books that I used to read as a kid or authors that I used to read as a kid that um, you know were part of our school curriculum that uh, I'm rediscovering. So this is, uh, is this a Newberry? Oh, Canadian Library Association for Children, book book of the year. So this is a handful of time, and unfortunately there's a big old sticker right on the back. But it's about this um, young girl named Patricia, and she has to go uh, spend the summer, I believe, with her grandmother. And then it says, Patricia discovers an old watch hidden under a floorboard. When she winds it, she finds herself taken back in time to a summer where her own mother was 12 so she is kind of like a time traveler thing and i'm sure she's probably going to find out all kinds of family uh, secrets and mystery and all of that sort of thing so again very very warm and cozy uh, children's sort of book and definitely something I would have loved when I was growing up. Uh, so I can remember, like I said, I can remember reading this. Don't Can't remember a whole lot about it. But I know it's a good one. And I know Kit Pearson's writing is absolutely fantastic. So definitely putting that one up on the... I'm going to have to make like a whole Canadian shelf <laughs> just over here. Um, I am creating more space. So I'm going to have to come up with a Canadian shelf, I think, over on the side here. And then continuing with our cheesy Canadian series, I found two in the Screech Owls series. So I col started collecting these books last year. Don't know why, they sounded super, super cute. I had never read them when I was growing up or when I was younger. Oh, I have a treasure, sorry. To the Pool with Mama, Sue Farrell, Robin Baird Lewis, Anik Press. Oh, is this like, I don't know what this has to do with. To the Pool with Mama. I don't know if that's a book. It looks like a bookmark. Um, so we have some treasures inside. Uh, so anyway, getting back to the Screech Owls. Um, I hadn't read this growing up, but I start, I've started finding them everywhere. And now I'm actually seeking them out. So this is uh, the year 2000. And um, basically it's about this hockey team, this uh, children or middle grade hockey team uh, called the Screech Owls, of course. And they get into all kinds of like uh, adventures and mysteries and all of that kind of thing. And it has to do with like different places in Canada. Um, so very much has to do with like Canadian history. And I just saw another treasure, Canadian history and all of that sort of stuff landscape and, and different provinces and everything so sounds super super cute and one of them is number 17 the secret of the deep woods but the other one doesn't tell me what number it is it just says the west coast murders um so again it has to do with this hockey team that gets into all kinds of adventures and our other treasure here exhibition game wednesday september 5th 2001 6 30 p.m at foothills park which is here in calgary uh so here we have like a ticket stub that i found in one of these books so it's a uh, like a, a minor league soccer game by the looks of it so i always save these little treasures um it's pretty cool to to find different things in there especially when it's so old like from 2001 um that has probably been stuck in there for the last <laughs> 23 years um yeah so that's pretty cool so a couple more screech owls to add to the shelf and i'm gonna have to actually pick one of these up and actually read it at some point 
but uh, oh sorry this is number 12 it wasn't on the it wasn't on the spine so this is number 12 the west coast murders so that sounds like something that i would like to read kind of during the summer as well and then the last book that I have out of our sort of Canadian uh, section of this book haul is Emily's Quest by L.M. Montgomery. So L.M. Montgomery, of course, is the author of the Anne of Green Gables series. And uh, the Emily books are another um, series that she wrote that basically has the same feels of Anne of Green Gables, it takes place on Prince Edward Island and during the same sort of time period. Uh, and there was a, a spin-off series made um, here in Canada called Emily of New Moon, which I've never seen, which is hilarious because Road to Avonlea, Anne of Green Gables, all of those are some of my absolute favorites. And I've never watched Emily of New Moon and I really, really want to. So I'm going to have to do that. And I was really super excited to find one of the books because you always find the Anne of Green Gables books but nothing out of the Emily series. So super super happy to have this for my uh, Ellen Montgomery collection and again something that I would sit down and read during the summertime. It's very warm and cozy and these are always like those feel-good sort of you know the girls are sort of too sweet to be true sort of stories. So this is based on Emily and she, she's a writer and her the man she's supposed to marry goes away and she is trying to fall in love with someone else who wants to marry her but she really really doesn't and um, she goes on an adventure herself so very kind of female empowering warm and cozy sort of book so if you've ever heard of the Emily series uh, let me know I know a lot of us know about Anne of Green Gables and Road to Avonlea but not a whole lot about this one so let me know and then quickly getting into a couple of movies that we found for our DVD collection. Uh, so we always go mainly for the vintage ones and mainly for horror, of course. Uh, so we did find a copy of the original Batman. And I'm not, I, like, I'm not a huge Batman lover, but the original, of course, is classic. It's very dark. It's Tim Burton. And uh, so I haven't seen it for years. Like, I, I don't think I could even tell you from beginning to end what the story is about because it's been literal years since I've seen this so I grabbed it because I thought that would be like a really good Sunday afternoon Sunday even evening movie to sit down with and then sticking with the darker side uh, we did find A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 um, Freddy's Revenge the first name in terror returns the first name in terror returns. Uh, so the Freddy movies uh, obviously are very, very cheesy. Um, we watched the original last year. I have to start collecting these because uh, I don't... Do I own the first one? I don't think I even own the first one yet. So I am trying to collect the series because they're super cheesy and they're just great to throw on and have a laugh. And then I found two, so we're getting out of the horror section now, two musicals that are two of my favorites. So we have Phantom of the Opera, which we read Phantom as, as part of my Haunted Victorian book club back in, I believe, February or January. Um, and uh, didn't love the book, but the musical is one of my favorites. And I used to own this and ended up selling it a few years ago. Very, very long story. So once I saw it, I bought it back. And then this one is one of my favorites as well. This is Bride and Prejudice, and it's a Bollywood take on Pride and Prejudice, and I love this movie. It's so cute. I love the music. I love the dancing. It's hilarious, and it is by the director of Bend It Like Beckham, which is another one of my favorites. So I was really super excited to get this because it's one of those movies that it's like every now and again you can get it on streaming, but then it disappears for like a year or two, and then, you know, I really want to watch it, and I can't find it anywhere, which is exactly why I'm starting to build up my DVD collection, because we've gotten rid of all of our streaming services at this point, and um, I just got fed up with it. They never have anything on there that I want to watch. The prices keep going up, or you need to buy extra subscriptions, or whatever the case is, so um, we're just starting to buy movies and shows, and uh, we watch mostly YouTube besides anyways, so... Um, really, really super excited to find that one. And then last but not least, uh, this was a great find, uh, Mrs. Brown's Boys. So I believe this is the entire series. It is 12 discs, I believe. Um, and we did double check to make sure they were all in there because that's what I find with thrift stores is sometimes you go in and, um, 
not all of the DVDs are in the cases. So I was super, super excited to find this and you can play it in North America, thank God, because I have bought DVDs before that are zone two or whatever it is and uh, they're not made to play here. So um, hilarious show if you've never seen it, I highly, highly recommend. I'm not into a whole lot of comedy. I, I just, comedy is not my thing, but British humor gets me every time. So super, super excited to find that. And that's another show that we can put on. Uh, movies we usually save for the weekends, but shows we, we watch during the week. So that's something we can throw on and experience again. So there you guys go. That is everything I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you've uh, collected any of these books yourself or if you've heard of the Emily books by Ellen Montgomery, Screech Owls, the Mandy books. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm so excited to have these to add to the collection. And again, on the ghosty shelf, the books that Jackie sent me as well, which was super, super sweet. So again, if you like the video, leave me a thumbs up and leave me a question or a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky, everybody. Bye.